everybody and welcome to another episode of Game Guru Max live broadcast number 104. And before I get stuck into showing some of the internal developments for Game Guru Max, let's just do a quick sound check, which I can do on my off screen, so you can't see it. And I just want to make sure that everything's coming through loud and clear. Uh, thank you, Lucas. You can hear me. That's wonderful. Let's crack on. And as always, this broadcast is split into two parts. A demo section and a QA section. I'm going to demonstrate some stuff and then after that a Q&A so I can answer your questions. But please do post your questions now. Stick a question mark at the end so we can find them when we scroll back. And uh, any questions that can be answered right away by my team members who are potentially joining in on this live chat, I'll answer in the Q&A section for as long as possible until the, uh, the time limit is exceeded and we prevent ourselves from creating a one-hour YouTube video. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. Sorry, the demo. <laughs> Okay, what have I got to show you today? Well, a couple of things. Um, just as a heads up, the next update for Game Guru Max is next Friday, not this Friday. So what you see today, you will be able to play in two days' time. You'll be playing around with in nine days' time, give or take a couple of features, because this is pretty early in development and I'm still working on it, so things are still subject to change. So let's just go into a simple level. This is one I prepared earlier. It's based off the island showdown. I've just deleted some entities so we can get into it really quick. And just zoom in a little bit. Because what I want to show you today is I have refactored the way the weapons and animation system works so it's a little cleverer and it's solved a couple of problems that are lurking in the issues board. And I think this is a really great way to go about it. So what I would like to show you first is a character. So if I just drop a character in, I have a few to choose from. Um, so we can find our old boy. There he is, like so. Now we're all familiar with dropping in characters into our game levels. And you're also familiar with the behaviors tab where you get to choose a behavior for this character. Now up until now, it wasn't ideal because you could select a behavior, but the weapon that you selected for the character um, didn't really care what the behavior was and that made no sense to me. So what I've done, I've moved the weapon choices within the behavior. Now it's the behavior, it's the script that controls whether or not the character is going to use a weapon, which makes a lot more sense because character attack is for soldiers with guns shooting at you, whereas melee attack is um, where they've got like a club or a spear or a dagger and they're running right up. And so there's different weapons for each of these behaviors. So if I show you character attack, go to the bottom, you'll see you don't choose any daggers or axes or what have you. It's just all the firing things, pistols, rifles, shotgun. And to make my point, if I just, just selected a character attack and just run the level, and you'll see that this character, he'll be equipped for this pistol, and he'll start shooting at me. And now inside the behavior, if I just select the rifle instead and rerun, he's now got a rifle. And I think nine out of 10 users will say, well, I just want this character to do a melee attack, boom. That's all you really want to do. And then press test game again and let the game engine take care of the rest which indeed it does, because now it's trying to clobber me. Another thing you'll notice, did you notice the health in the bottom right? It now glows green. That's something that a few people thought was a bug, it isn't. You get a few seconds of invulnerability when you start a level for the first time. Uh, but that wasn't visually indicated anywhere. Now you get a nice green glow to show that you are immune as long as it's glowing. But we're on melee attack, but look, we have now different weapon selection. Axe, dagger, spear, let's choose axe, rerun. And a couple of things, there you go, so now you've got an axe, uh, or an Aztec axe, specifically. So you can see how easy it is now. The behaviours are actually filtering out the weapon choices. But deeper than that, and it's something that um, I'm going to come on to next, is in order for all this to happen, we needed to change the animation sets for the characters. 
The animation set for a character running around hitting you with an axe is completely different to a character running around shooting a rifle at you. And so the behavior also had to control animation sets and different types of animation sets, and that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, but before that, I just want to show you the power of this. I've shown you character, which you're used to for all the soldiers, and melee, which you've seen recently with the Aztec game kit. But look what happens if I just select zombie attack. Forget weapons for a minute, but understand that it is the animation set that the behavior is now controlling. And you could never see this before. Um, you can take any character, and if you say this character needs to be a zombie attack, it uses the animation set for the zombies, applies it to the soldier character, or the farmer, um, and you get away with it. And now it's the behaviours that control the animations, which is, I think, the correct way around. And one nice little thing I'd like to show you is, if we go to character attack, um, and just instantly press... It does all the things internally, it changes the weapon to the default pistol, it changes the animation so it's a pistol animating. And if we switch down to say, rifle, you know automatically, because you can see down here. This isn't the final implementation, what I want to do is a drop down, which shows you a nice plain English description of the animation sets, rather than this huge long winded file uh, address. But I think I will, uh, you know, let you see that in the advanced setting, so you can just point to any animation file and it appends it to the character and happy days. But for standard users, it's best just to have a drop down with all the options available. And what I want to talk about is another booster pack that's been developed by um, Mark Blosser, AKA Bond One. So it's again, just, for, <laughs> just to iterate, this is not TGC wasting their time going off on a tangent. We're not. We're working on updates, working on fixes, working on functionality for Game Guru Max. And completely separate, although it is linked because as this uh, work is going on, I'm, as you see, improving Game Guru Max in order to accommodate. But accommodate what? I hear you asking this booster. Well, it's an animation booster pack. You know, we've provided lots of animations for soldiers and melee and zombies and other kinds of things and animals. But what if you wanted more animations? How do those animations come in? Do you want to create animations? Probably not. You just want a big bag of more animations. And that's what Mark Blosher is working on right now. And I can give you a sneak peek. As I said, these UIs are not final and there's more animations still being worked on and to come. Uh, certainly the ones, I've got them all, you need to do all the testing and do the UI for it. But let me show you this. This is rifle. So if I just run this, I've selected the rifle weapon. Hey you. There you go. And he shoots and shoots. Now you notice how he's holding his gun. Right? That's fine. However, um, it's not the only way. You know, what if you want a different animation? At the moment, if you play enough Game Guru Max shooty games, everyone has identical animations and running around doing exactly the same things and the different. And of course, that's going to get a bit stale if your game kind of combat looks exactly the same as everybody else's. So you want a different set of animations, don't you? Correct. And that's where this comes in. So we've got, going to have to go to the builds area, which is here. And animations, again, you won't be able to need to do all this. This will all be in a nice little drop down. But for now, I've prepared some files, including rifle lowered. Dink. So the weapon stays the same, but now there's this new animation, which will be part of the animation booster pack. And if I run this, you'll notice immediately, look how he holds his rifle. See? Across the chest. If you're going to change some settings, uh, have the character get close to me and don't do any flanking modes. Try again, because what I want him to do is, is, is follow me so you can see this. There you go. You see he walks with the rifle across the chest? Um, that's, I think, much better than the one where it's sort of aiming at some almost net level, pointing straight at you. Now, of course, there's a couple of issues I'm still working on. You think, why is he not shooting at me? Well, what I thought was rather clever is uh, the weapon itself has to have line of sight. But at the moment, the, the rifle is actually, if you look at the line of sight for the rifle, it's actually pointing off to the right, 
and slightly down. So that line is actually projecting that way and never sees the player. Obviously, that's a bit of a not quite right. I mean, it was good in some situations, like the enemy only really shoots at you if they're pointing the gun. But what I'm going to do is add some more logic to the character attack, where when the character sees you, the character raises the weapon. I mean, obviously, they still shoot, but I can only actually get a shot in when the, the gun's facing me. Which brings me to the last piece. Again, the more this bra demo goes on, the deeper you get into the rabbit hole. But I just want to make sure that you uh, have an idea and a handle on what's going on. This is, just so you know, this is the default animations is given to uh, an adult male character and pistol is the preferred default weapon. But if I go into animations and booster, we have some more things we can play with. And what I want to show is this one, soldier male rifle lowered. And uh, don't worry about that. And then if we scroll down to here, as you can see, we've actually got the uh, the pose that I was talking about. But look what else we've put in. We have this raise animation, then an animation which is a loop, and that can be changed in speed, so da -da 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 -da, or slow, or just one shot. And then when you're finished, lowers the, the weapon down. So those aren't in yet, those are gonna go into the logic, so a character can run, raise weapon, bang, 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 lower weapon, maneuver to a new position and whilst I'm at it I've been waiting for these for quite a while and these are going to go into the core which is turn on spot you see the character doesn't actually turn but you can imagine the character rotating left or right and there's one for left and one for right and so the character will be able to rotate in an arbitrary angle and it'll look correct in terms of the animation and the foot planting so those five things are going to go in and once they're in you will be able to um, have characters having weapons in front of the chest at the waist level. Then they'll raise the weapon, bang, 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 and lower it, which I think is much more convincing. And it's more recognisable from, say, modern games. So that's what I'm working on. As I said, you won't get it this Friday, but you'll get it next Friday as a regular cadence of updates. With this, all the function that backs this up and... After all this has been done, it's pretty much sewn up, just have to clean up the UI at this level. But there's an advanced level I'd like to put some stuff into, specifically about changing individual animations within a character. So right now, you, it's pretty easy to just select, I want melee and I want uh, spear. And the animations have been taken care of, etc. So if I just run this, the guy's now got spear and the animations... Uh, provided for you but let's say you wanted to change the running or the walking or how the spear attacks you don't want to change the whole lot you're not interested in writing your own character attack script but you do want to maybe customize just one of the more common animations you know the move or the idle how they attack and that's four or five animations and if you have the ability to take our rig which we'll provide and then do your own animations and then just change that one or two animations within an existing animation set, then you've got a lot of customizability in how your characters look and perform and it creates a more unique experience for your players. So that's what I'm working on. Okay, <laughs> hopefully that was fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to showing it the rest of the world. I'm also looking forward to showing the, I think it's a, a the count now is about 150 new animations that Matt Blosser is, is, is worked at. So uh, looking forward to showing off. Maybe I'll get to show you those next week. Um, not just the the ones that you, you would kind of want, like all the, the combat -y stuff, but there's other kinds of animations that have nothing to do with combat. Characters just leaning against a wall, sitting on a chair, milling about, things like that, you know, to populate your character's behaviours with more than just running around and trying to kill the player. You can start populating a village or an area where people are doing lots of different things. And I think we've covered a lot of bases with the animations I've chosen. But as always, once it goes out, if you've got any ideas for more animations, we'll probably be adding to that pack um, as, as requests come in through the issues board. So that's the demo section. And now let's charge on to see if you've got any worthy questions for old Lee. Okay, now I've got 
Hopefully I don't close the window. <laughs> is I'm going to look for a question. And I'm going to start, as always, from my perspective at the bottom. Hopefully all questions have been answered. If not, I'm happy to answer them now. Thank you, Zach, for joining us uh, this evening. Massive yellow text, so uh, I know where to start. And the first of the questions is, will we be able to import animated textures? Um, that's actually a conversation that's going on in the issues board right now. I don't think it's a great idea to sort of play an MP4, but I do like the idea of importing an MP4, slicing it up into images, saving that out as a texture atlas, and using texture atlases to animate textures in your game. That's what the modern games do. I think that's what we should as well. Playing lots and lots of MP4s in the middle of a game, not the best idea in the world. So uh, certainly dig out uh, on the issues board that conversation, and please add to it if you've got any ideas it's not super difficult, it's just somewhere on the list and there's high priority items that need to be dealt with first. Specifically, uh, bug fixes. Um, there's a lot of highs that relate to crashes and instability. We want to get those sorted out sooner rather than later. Next question, any info on moving GG Classic maps to Max? Yes, that's one of the things that I'm looking at quite seriously. There's still a large Game Guru Classic community, and for good reason, and a lot of requests is coming in that can't we just... I've got a game project, been working on it for six months, kind of just imported into Max every time I do things that don't go perfectly. Well, that pipeline from Classic to Max, that's something we're going to spend a little bit more time looking at. Because so I think it is important that you can migrate your projects from Classic to Max. There might be some fiddling around we need to do with a few Classic updates, and obviously updates in Game Guru Max. But yeah, I think it's a really good idea, and it's something we are looking at, and we're certainly not ignoring Third question, is there any way to place a spawner that will spawn an enemy, but then after the enemy dies, can set it to spawn a new enemy after a set time? Yeah, um, spawn generators. If anyone's old enough to remember Gauntlet, um, you'd have a spawn generator in corner of room, and it would just start filling up the room with enemies, and you had to keep blasting your way through. And if you left it long enough, the whole room was filled with, with the enemy, and there was no room to actually get in the... In the, <laughs> you'd open the door and you just start smashing your way through all the enemies, uh, and so yeah, there is a good, you know, it's a good idea. It's a common trope. There would be a limit on how many can spawn, and then it would stop. And of course, you get to choose all in bits and pieces. We do have data structure support for spawning, but right now we're focusing on performance, getting that performance a bit higher, for benefit of more people, and of course the benefit of VR. And I think once performance is the realm where most people are happy and anyone on minimum spec can get away with creating a nice decent sized level and playing it, then we'll start th thinking of things like spawn. Because all spawn is going to do right now is slow down whatever level you've created as it starts adding new objects over and over and over. There's other ways you can do it. You can drop in an object, hide it at the start, and then when you enter a trigger zone or something like that, you can make that object visible. And it's part of the game. Sort of a kind of spawn. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I know what you mean. It's the spawn generator where you drop it in and it generates objects after object after objects with certain rules. So it's definitely something we've done before and we're happy to do again. But I, again, it's about priorities and when we should do it. Okay, another question from Zach. Is it possible to completely change the player controller in Game Guru Classic, yes, it is possible. Uh, the script you're looking for is um, there's global.lua, which is in the script bank, and then there's another one called, I think it's Game Player Loop, something like that, dot .lua, and that's huge script. And that's literally ages ago, years and years and years ago, it was asked, can we just, instead of your hard coded version of the player control, can't we? you know, edit it ourselves. And that's a really good idea. So we externalized the entire play control script. Not many people changed it. You can change little bits and pieces. There's quite a lot of code to wade through, but that's already available. Just look in the script bank. Look for, uh, I think it's game player loop. Maybe someone on the chat can correct me and I'll repeat it. Um, but it has been a while since I played around with that script in Classic. But it's definitely accessible to you right now in the latest version of Game Guru Classic. Okay, uh, please, can you demonstrate how to use the trigger zone to open animating door? I can get it to work with the sliding door, but not other types. Okay, that's an interesting question. Thank you for that. Demonstrate a trigger zone 
that opens a door. Right, okay, let's go back to our test level. No guarantee I'll actually be able to do this, but I'm up for a challenge. And I'll probably do it as you've probably done it, and then I'll hit the same roadblock as you, in which case, if it turns out this is an actual failing, uh, please do put it in the issues board and uh, assign it to me. So, obviously, we'll put it in front of us a trigger zone. Obviously, we'll need a door. So, tap out the door, find all the doors we have available. So, what we got? Lovely, lovely doors. Uh, okay, cage door. Tap that one. Okay, so there's our door. Before we mess about with triggers, let's just see what this door does by default. Or we could have looked at the behavior that was attached to this door. So what does it do right now? Press E to open door, and the door opens, and I can run through. Now, let's see what behavior it's using. Uh, da -da -da -da, so it's door rotate. So there's very few properties for door rotate. Um, so yeah, there probably won't be a way uh, to open this door um, without some property which then switches between press E to open and some other way to trigger it. But let's assume, so that's a deficiency. If you want door rotate to have those properties, let us know on the issues board and we'll add the necessities. There's other kinds of door behaviours and I'll get to that in a bit. But for now, I just want to link these up. Let's see if just by entering the trigger, there's already some secret code in there. Okay. So this particular behavior does not have a detector for when triggered open door. So that's a feature request. Please pop that into the um, the issues board. But there are other door scripts. There's two actually. There's door rotate and door. And I think there's another one. Yeah, door sliding. Let's look at door sliding for a minute just for fun. I think this is the most evolved of the door scripts. So open with key is off by default. So door is locked. Find a way to open it. Uh, manual. Uh, delayed close or automatic, so maybe we want it automatic. Uh, so if we run that, you don't press E, but I think automatic might be if you just get near it, it opens. Yeah, but you want it to be triggers. If we just trigger that with the zone, no, we've triggered that based on proximity. So uh, if we look for the third behavior type, which is just door, this has a different set of properties, so it's initially unlocked. Door is locked, find a key to open the door with the text, like so. So yeah, it sounds like a feature request. What you want then is all three doors, door, door rotate, and door sliding, that when you actually connect a trigger zone to any of those three behaviors, and I think the closest one we got to was uh, door sliding because it had this property, open with E key. So I would see an additional property that you can request, open with trigger, and have that as a mutually exclusive ticky tick. In fact, no, you could have it so you could go up to the door and press E, or as a secondary option, you could open it with a trigger and tick that there. So, you know, why, why have a mutual exclusion when you don't necessarily have to, and it might have extra gameplay implications. So yeah, pop that in as a feature request. It's not hard to do. We trigger lots of things with lots of behaviors. It just happens that this particular property is missing. So very long answer, but yeah, you've just generated a potential feature request there. So please post it in our issues board, which you'll find. Just go to GitHub, type out Game Guru, and you'll see the issues board, and you can just do add new issue, and you can type it, type it. Okay, um, Ba, 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 ba. Next question is, is Game Guru Max stable for us to start making assets and sell it through the store? Or we rather wait for later updates and bug fixes? Yeah, if you really want to sort of go at it both feet running full speed, wait for when we call it version 1. Version 1 means we've done all of the stability, bug fixes, performance work, the rest of the features. And as you saw when I was moving around... Just drop, drop in another character. When I actually move the weapon control system into that, little changes like this will still be happening during early access. So if you're actually creating stuff that's depending on an earlier iteration and then we change it, it might change something that devastates the assets you are creating. I'm not saying don't do it. In fact, people are already creating assets. If we go to get more objects and then go to, um, I think it's, here, access your store items. No, we can just click this, this top one. Uh, you can't see it because it's in the other window. I'm going to drag it across for you. Hopefully you can still see it. 
Um, this was created. This was created for Max. If you look, Gengaru Classic, no. Gengaru Max, yes. Assets are already being created. Um, so you can do that. You can publish our items on the Game Creator Store. And then people can browse them. They can be free or you can charge for them. And then once they bought them, you can download them using access to your store items. All that is there already and waiting for you. No problem whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, the answer, I suppose the answer is yes. So let's find another question. Just checking the clock. We're doing quite well. We're 28 minutes in, but we started three minutes after the hour. So 25 minutes real time. Let's look for some more questions, shall we? This is from Nikki. Any plans on making the EBE system to make buildings uh, selves like you guys did in Classic? Um, any plans on making the EBE system? Well, you can already access the old one, which um, is not exactly like Classic, but there is certain similarities, I would suggest. Settings, developer mode, say yes. Click this top one, and then you've got legacy structure editor. Select that and you can create some basic buildings with walls, floors, ceilings, staircases, um, and multiple layers. It's, it's, it's not ideal, but you can actually create interior structures um, and you can connect them together. The maximum size is like, um, it's 100, a thousand by a thousand by a thousand, I think it is, in terms of unit size. But you can click many of those things together to create larger creations. Um, and there's also some work going on in the background that I can't reveal too much of, but a better version of the EBE. But I shall say no more. Many things, many plates are spinning. <laughs> so I'm happy to reveal that in the near future. Here's another question. This is from Bob. Uh, will there be an easy way to customise the HUD? Yes. Uh, at the moment, the closest you get to customising stuff is the storyboard uh, screen editor. So this idea of, you know, you'll probably notice that you can add and subtract buttons, but you can change the font, the size, the graphics, um, all of the media aspects that you see on the right hand side. All of these you can actually modify your main menu, your loading screens, your game load saves, your in-game menus. So you can imagine when you press the escape key in your standalone game, this is what you see. Well, imagine this being taken a stage further where you can actually change the HUD graphic for what shows your health or the HUD graphic that shows your weapons. You'll be able to change the graphics and text, numerics and, uh, and uh, the, the semi-transparency factor, all those sorts of things. The reason it's not been done yet is we want to fold it into the VR work because it'd be good if you, when you create these, we have at least one eye on what it would look like in a VR environment. Because if you put them too far into the corner and you're playing VR, it's really it creates eye strain because you can't see so far into the corner. You're always really facing forwards. So we need to crack both of those uh, issues at the same time. So that's why we've delayed that a little bit. But it, yes, it's an absolute essential if you want full customization of your final game. Here's a question from uh, Akari Warrior. Or worrier, <laughs> worrier. Um, uh, will we ever be able to create RTS games using Game Guru Max? RTS, real time strategy. So think the old Warcraft, where you'd create like 50 orcs and then charge them into another person's base, which has 50 wizards and they all get slaughtered or not. Or uh, was one of my favourite ele <laughs> elements. There are no plans to do RTS, it's a whole new kind of genre. Not saying it won't be done but it won't be done officially. We have a very powerful scripting system, and I dare say, at some point, you'll just be able to throw away all of the logic that we've created, and someone's gonna create a big map, and do a lot of scripts, and now you've got RTS. But that'll most likely come from the community, and not from the official builds. Right now, we want to focus on RPG, the puzzle elements, and VR. Those are the biggies that we want to get into the software, so it's a more rounded game maker. So checking out the clock, we now hit the 30 minute mark, but I won't just disappear. I'll find two questions from people who haven't asked a question before, and then we'll call that a wrap. So looking for a question mark, we're at the bottom of the page, so hopefully not. Here we go. The first question from a person who's not asked a question before, this is from Jay Bird Max. Maybe you already asked a question right at the top, and then Zach hid the or <laughs> answered it, but I, no way of knowing that. Spawn generator sounds good, but if we could just make it so that when an AI character dies, that action spawns a new replacement. So when it dies, 
I see what you mean. So a character is you know, effectively created, it runs a little way, you kill it, and the characters respawn at its starting point. And you know what? I think there actually was, and I know I'm trying to wrap it up and I'm going to in another demonstration, but the closest, and I think it might even work, is you have a character and that character gets killed and then you drop in a zone and then you link that zone to that character and when that character died and then someone entered the zone the triggering action would resurrect the character now at the time that was kind of a bug um, but it shows the functionality is so close that yeah um, with a, with create your own script and, and then just do the um, I think it will be spawn or activate or something like that and you may just be able to resurrect that character and of course use the other lure commands to reposition the character at the starting point which you could do just by grabbing that position and storing it in your own lure globals until such time as you need that coordinate after the respawn. You might actually be able to do it right now with scripting. But I do hear, hear you for the other 98% of the population. Can we just have a tick box in general properties for this character? Maybe we we'll click this character, character settings, somewhere in here about, you know, spawn, stir if killed after so many seconds. That's probably what most people would like to see instead of scratching their head over a very long and complicated lure script. And the last question. Um, Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Yeah, this is a question mark, and it's from Jareth. Is there any ETA on the tutorial for adding your own characters with animations to make enemies and allies and such and weapons? Well, actually, you've seen right now that I'm still modifying how behaviours, then weapons, then animations all fit nicely into a clean system that works for the most people, but then gives you that um, clever ordering of what is most important, then the next important. No point choosing the weapon first and then choosing the behaviour, and the behaviour entirely controls what that weapon does. So it's behaviours first, then weapons and animations. I think at the end of next week, when all that is settled, um, please post an issue on the issues board and then email me at lee at .com as a quick reminder, because I don't think it'll be too arduous to knock out a couple of pages of, given that latest architecture, what you need to do to create a character, ideally using our rig, then animating that character, it will probably push you in the direction of Blender, and then importing that character so you can actually see your character in the game using, instead of writing your own uh, behavior, which is a lot of work, you can use character attack, melee attack, or zombie attack. So you would create a character, but then don't worry about the logic because we have it covered for you here. So thank you for that question, and that is the final question for this week's broadcast. Uh, I will be back next Wednesday at 7pm BST, and look out for a build next Friday, when you get to see the final and finished version of this improved animation handling system. So uh, I will speak to you all again next Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm certainly very hot. <laughs> Can't wait to put my aircon back on. So until next week, thank you for your kind attention and I'll speak to you then. Goodbye.